Plymouth is a relaxed harbour port city in the south of Devon. Easily accessible by train or by road, Plymouth is a popular destination for long weekend getaways. Home to one of the world's leading universities for marine biology, Plymouth has a great nightlife scene and there are plenty of trendy bars and cafes to try out serving local, organic, and fresh produce. Steeped in maritime history, Plymouth has plenty of opportunities to learn about the southwest of England's rich coastal heritage. With manor houses and theatres to explore, Plymouth is a delight to visit come rain or shine. So, here is the list of 10 best things to do in Plymouth, England. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest upcoming travel videos. Here we go. Number 1. Plymouth Hoe. Plymouth Hoe, or simply the Hoe, is considered the center and beating heart of the city. Perched high above the harbor, this gorgeous park offers breathtaking views of the city and the wider area around Plymouth Sound. These are totally stunning, especially on a sunny day. As you stroll, you'll spot the Naval War Memorial and the Armada Monument, which is designed with the coats of arms of the towns that aided in the battle in the 1500s. After walking the promenade, make your way over to the art installation known as the Beetle Bums. It serves as a reminder of the time when the Beatles came to Plymouth back in the 1960s. You'll also get some picture-perfect spots from the viewing platform of the Smeaton Tower, a magnificent red and white striped lighthouse that stands proudly. Number 2. National Marine Aquarium. Established in 1988 the National Marine Aquarium is ideally located between the Barbican and the fish market. The iconic building has become a well-known landmark within Plymouth cityscape. First and foremost, the National Marine Aquarium is a consideration center and this is evident throughout your time at the center, they take every opportunity to educate their visitors in a fun and engaging way. No doubt you will leave the National Marine Aquarium inspired to save the seas and all who live in them. The National Marine Aquarium's most recent venture is its Sleeping with the Sharks project. Visitors are invited for a sleepover under the shark enclosure to learn about life in the oceans and how fragile marine environments can be. An exciting and engaging experience for all the family. Number 3. Plymouth Sound. Standing on the Hoe, you can take a few minutes to gaze at this vast natural harbour, spotting Royal Navy vessels and watching the water traffic. A neat way to see this immense body of water is from the east side between Mount Batten Point and Anduin Point. The geology of the cliffs and outcrops is also fascinating, and changes from red and green sandstone in the south around Anduin Point, to slates, siltstones, and darker sandstone as you head north towards the city. On the way, you'll observe colossal faults in the rock caused by tectonic pressures up to 330 million years ago. The route is littered with coastal forts raised in different periods, like the circular artillery fort atop Mount Batten, dating to 1652 and the site of a Bronze Age fort. Number 4. Royal Citadel. The Royal Citadel was built on the site of an earlier fortification in the 17th century and remained the most important coastal defense in England for more than 100 years. The structure encompasses the site of an earlier fort built in the time of Sir Francis Drake. It's still used by the military, so be sure to check your tour for the attraction, entry is via guided tours only, which must be booked in advance of your visit. A highlight of the visit is the Royal Chapel of St. Catherine upon the Hoe, originally licensed for services in 1371 but rebuilt over the centuries. A road runs around the citadel, affording excellent views. Number 5. Saltram Manor House and Gardens. Saltram Manor House and Gardens overlook the gorgeous River Plym and are set on rolling hills and gorgeous, lush, green countryside. With an interesting and intriguing history, 
Saltram offers guests guided tours of the property where they are welcome to learn and ask about the heritage of this National Trust protected building and grounds. For those interested in gardening be sure not to miss the wonderful orangery, of which the Saltram landscaping and gardening team are immensely proud. Saltram House is full of treasures waiting to be discovered, seasonal programs mean that at whatever time of the year you visit this stately manor, you will find something new and exciting to see. The gardens and grounds are open to dogs provided they are kept on their leashes. Throughout the summer months, Saltram offers garden tours and expert advice to their green-fingered visitors. Number 6. Plymouth Naval Memorial At the centre of Plymouth Hoe is a war memorial for British and Commonwealth sailors who lost their lives in the World Wars and have no known burial place. The memorial is one of three monuments, here, and at the Royal Navy bases in Portsmouth and Chatham. It bears the names of 7,251 sailors missing from the First World War and 15,933 from the Second World War. Unveiled in 1924, the memorial was designed by Scottish architect Henry Lorimer, and its lions, Royal Navy crest, and globe atop the obelisk were carved by Henry Poole. In 2016 at the centenary of the Battle of Jutland, the memorial was elevated to grade I listed status. Number 7. Barbican. The Barbican on the north and west sides of Sutton Harbour is a stylish, historic, and cosmopolitan area to get lost in for an hour or two. It's one of the few quarters of the city to escape major damage during the Plymouth Blitz in the Second World War and has tight alleys flanked by Tudor, Jacobean and Georgian properties from the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. There are more than 100 listed buildings on this labyrinth of cobblestone lanes, and the parade is a charming place to wander beside Sutton Harbour in the evening. The Barbican also has a very international selection of places to eat, as well as galleries, unique independent shops, pubs, cafes, and attractions like the Plymouth Distillery. Number 8. Dartmoor Zoo. Under 10 miles from Plymouth on the southern boundary of the Dartmoor National Park, Dartmoor Zoo is a day out that will go down well with younger members of the family. The park was the inspiration for the 2011 movie We Bought a Zoo, starring Matt Damon and Scarlett Johansson, based on the mishaps suffered by the current owners who purchased the attraction in 2006. Among the 72 mammal species are Amur tigers, African lions, jaguars, lynxes, Iberian and grey wolves, short-clawed otters, zebras, and wallabies. The zoo also has a variety of owls, tarantulas, leaf insects, snakes, and the oldest inhabitant, Tina, the spur-thighed tortoise, now pushing 60 years old. Number 9. Plymouth Gin Distillery. Plymouth Gin Distillery has produced one of the world's most iconic gins from their factory in central Plymouth since 1793. As one of the world's first formal gin distillers, Plymouth Gin Distillery proudly opened its doors to visitors and invited them to join a 40-minute tour of their impressive facility. At the end of the tour, guests are given the choice of a complimentary miniature bottle of Plymouth's famous gin or a gant in the refectory bar. For gin enthusiasts, Perhaps the master's tour for 40 pounds, 51 US dollars, would be more appropriate. The two and a half hour tour takes you comprehensively through the distilling process in this distilling masterclass. Booking ahead is highly recommended as this tour can sell out three weeks in advance. Number 10. Royal William Vittling Yard. The stately Royal William Vittling Yard is a former Royal Navy property that was released by the Ministry of Defence in 1992. Up to that point it had been used for Vittling, supplying Navy vessels with food and drink. It has an ensemble of distinguished buildings from the 1820s and the 1830s designed by Sir John Rennie, made up of a former bakery, slaughterhouse, brewhouse, old and new cooperages, warehouses, and residences. Since the 90s this has all been turned into a posh waterside neighborhood, with yachts docked on the water, and a mixture of restaurants, shops, bars, and residential properties. 
drop by in summer and there are lots of public events, like outdoor theater, arts and crafts markets, and open-air cinema screenings. The last word. So, guys, this was the best list of things to do in Plymouth. Hope you will like it and appreciate it. People who come to this city are amazed by all of the awesome things there are to do and see. From a cheeky tipple of gin to a gentle stroll around the reservoir, from the bright lights of the Theatre Royal to the ever-intriguing National Marine Aquarium, Plymouth always has something up its sleeve to keep you entertained and keep you snapping away with your camera. So, if you love to travel and you want to see the whole world then Tripar is the channel that gives you a list of the best places to visit in the world. Make sure you subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for latest upcoming travel videos. Bye bye, see you in the next video.